Hey, hey, hey. Today, I would like to talk about something a little different than my usual fare. I want to talk about trepanation. Now, what is trepanation? Well, trepanation is the fine art of boring a hole into the skull of a human being in order to release the pressure of an imbalanced body energy or to allow uh, brain tissue to pulsate freely, uh, increase the flow of blood and oxygen by creating an outtake valve, or uh, maybe it's just to let the demons out so they will stop fucking talking, non-stop talking, telling you over and... Yeah, sorry. Um many reasons uh so the first recorded case is from about seven thousand years ago in france and uh that makes it the birth of modern surgery see trepanation is allegedly the oldest known surgical technique now there is the fact that soft tissue decays Whereas a uh, hole in the skull would show up as the skull fossilizes. But do we really think six, seven millennia ago the Gauls were doing appendectomies? Maybe. But I somehow doubt it. So it is quite possibly the first surgical technique. And humanity does have a collective desire to return to a life of simplicity um but that doesn't mean we should go back to rolling our own filth or uh, drilling holes in our skull i mean just because the caveman did it isn't a good reason for us to do it today i mean they ate lice off of each other and slept with their sisters okay well kentucky still does that but Sorry to my bluegrass audience members. <laughs> no, uh, trepanation was practiced widely uh, from the ancient world through medieval times. And it was used to treat virtually any disease or disorder or injury that involved the head or the personality. And it was very effective basically never. But that does not mean there are no good reasons to drill into someone's head. There are. Um, it's just that back then, they weren't exactly able to diagnose those. Now, sometimes a person will have a skull injury. And when that happens, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, uh, CSF, can collect in the, in the skull and start to put pressure on the brain. And... It can be manually relieved with a drill. By the way, how do you know it's CSF? There's two really good ways to tell. Um, there's the halo technique, where basically you just take a drop of blood and you put it onto the fluid that you think may be CSF, and it will create a halo. The other way is CSF tastes very sweet. Uh, let's go with the CSF uh, halo method because um, you can also uh, use uh, drilling to create a slight hole so that you can perform a minor surgery correct a uh, slight bleed or you can insert electrodes because that always works out really well in the movies right Look, it is easy to understand how a medieval barber, uh, barber, uh, we used to not let doctors do surgery because that's dirty and vulgar. It's barbarous. So barbers are the ones who would actually do the surgeries. That's why the barber pole's red and white. It's blood. Sorry, side topic. Um, it's easy to understand how these medieval bastards would drill holes in the head. I mean, they used leeches. So, absolutely, trepanation is a logical 
cure to many of these ailments. But that's back then. Why the hell would anyone want to do that today? There is a shocking number of people that are still preaching the virtues of trepanation. <laughs> they believe it's a path to inner peace, cosmic consciousness, and that it can even give you special powers like ESP. One of the most vocal advocates of trepanation is Bart Hughes, a Dutch drug guru who aspired to be Abby Hoffman. Yeah. Hughes, who once told an interviewer, I had 25 girlfriends when I was 11. Okay. Claims that he found enlightenment via trepanation. See, he got the idea for trepanation when he realized that he could get high by standing on his head for long periods of time. Now, the uh, pot that he smoked beforehand had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and then, while he was in prison, yep, Hughes decided somehow that the experience of standing on his head would be better. If he drilled a hole at the spot that mystics designate as the third eye. Now, these are Hughes' words, not mine. In prison, having checked the mechanism by perceiving the cerebrospinal fluid in the back, outside the central nervous system, I thought about making a hole at the base of the spine to let the fluid out. And while thinking about holes, I realized that pressure was necessary to squeeze the cerebrospinal fluid out of the system. Then, having concluded upon the nil pressure inside the adult skull, in most people, the skull seals between the ages of 18 and 22. No, it seals. I saw that any hole in the bony surrounding of the system would give the pressure back. But after a time, I realized a hole in the spine would heal over. So it had to be in the skull, where holes stay open. If you can decipher that paragraph, uh, don't. <laughs> Bastard's crazy. Now, um, so Hughes drilled a hole in his own forehead. See, he tried to get some doctors to do it, but they were not stupid. Uh, so, the trepanation led him to a higher state of consciousness. Now, uh, this is right after taking mescaline, after drilling a hole in his head, but that had nothing to do with it. Hughes claimed as a result of this operation, he became permanently high. <laughs> Hughes also claims that people who think trepanation is a load of crap are simply suffering from the ill effects caused by the lack of trepanation. <laughs> if the skeptics had holes drilled in their heads, they would understand. <sighs> this point of view has been adopted by a small but vocal handful of people who, I have to say it, are open-minded. <laughs> um, Peter Halverson, who's a, a main student of Hughes, he leads the International Trepanation Advocacy Group, ITAG. And they work to spread the good news about trepanation via testimonials, interviews, research articles, and by publishing a wide variety of totally coherent arguments in favor of the uh, practice. So according to ITAG's website, some of us are willing to present ourselves publicly so that the old stigma associated with making a hole in the skull will be worn down over time. We applaud their courage. Halverson explained the advantages in uh, 2000 to Salon Magazine, noting that after trepanation, you look at problems as a source of entertainment. 
because once you have a hole in your head, right, um, everything else probably seems a little less important. But according to Halverson, I have no problem taking ridicule from the general public, but I expect doctors to act as scientists. They have a professional responsibility to respond to this from an academic viewpoint. In the back of their minds, they know that something good happens when you open the skull. Eventually, they'll come around. <sighs> I'm glad he's no problem taking ridicule because <laughs> fucker deserves it. Now, um, the doctors who Salon reached out to, they describe trepanation as quackery, horseshit, absolute unequivocal bullshit, and dangerous. Now, Dr. Robert Daroff, a professor of neurology, is quoted as this. This is a crackpot notion that's not worthy of my time. And not only that, it's dangerous. You expose your precious brain. You remove God's covering. There's risk of infection and all sorts of other problems. Now, in all fairness, in the back of their minds, there is support. You just have to drill far enough to get to it. <laughs> now, this should go without saying. Do not drill into your skull. It is bad. It is not safe. It is not smart. Please don't do it. I only bring to you trepanation so that we can laugh and mock these stupid people. Kids, don't try this at home. Don't try this at the hospital. Don't try this anywhere. And if you know anyone that's going to try this, tell them not to. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed recording it. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Ugh. <sighs>